All right, we're live. Hey, it's time for Green Shorts, and this is my neighbor Clayton. Howdy. He knows how to bake bread. So we've actually got the cob oven fired up, and it's been doing that for about two hours, heating up. Let me show you what's going on inside there. You can see the coals. Actually, you can't really see the coals, which is good, but there's some intense heat coming out right about there. So what we're gonna do is a quick, hi, hi there, I see we've got nine viewers already. That's exciting, thanks for coming on today. Um, if you have any questions, um, save them for later because um, I can't go back and look at the chat uh, on the phone we're filming on. So we'll do a Q&A session at the end if you'd like to know more about, about what's happening here with the cob bread oven. So um, we've got two loaves of bread that Clayton's prepared um, and I just made some tools today. So I've got a peel which is going to allow me Trevor, you don't need to film this. Okay, um, it's going to let us get our bread in and out of the oven. Made this with a piece of scrap shelf wood and an old broomstick. I've also got a fire hook, which is some flat bar steel, which I actually paid for. Um, but I used a piece of pecan from a branch to pecan wood, which is common here in Georgia, to make uh, the handle for this. This will be used to pull the the coals out of the oven, which we're going to do before we bake the bread. And then finally, I've got a mop, which is an old towel and a 2x4 that I cut down to 1x. And this will let us add moisture to the oven. We'll clean the ash off the floor of the oven before we start baking. That's going to keep the bread from getting too dirty from the ash. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is uh, get the get the hot coals out of the oven. All right, so let's see if you would help me here, Clay. I've got I've got a metal bucket here with some wet sand in it, and actually it's, there's a hole in the bottom, but it's got a board on it. Why don't you grab the camera and pull it up here so folks can see better. So just hold it up and then we'll tilt that down. You're not going to be able to see what they're seeing, but that's okay. Watch out, you're still in your shoe. <laughs> That's a, no, sorry. sorry. Clayton took a hot nail on the foot. Yeah, we'll have to flatten one edge of that the next time we do this because it's the easiest to get all that ash right in there. So let's get let's get the uh, on the ground here. Get the get those coals out of the way. Didn't think think through that all the way. All right, hang on. So let's set this back over here. All right. So now that um, we've got that the fire out, I'm gonna mop it out real quick. I'm just gonna kind of mop the center. Got this towel wet down here, and just want to clean off the center of the floor. Just want to clean off the floor there in the oven where we're going to put the bread, and that'll keep it from getting ash on it.
All right, that's also going to give us some moisture in the oven as we want our bread to have not, uh, not dry out too much as we're baking it. So that's pretty good in there. Let's do this. See so if we can transfer one of the loaves to the um, peel. I'll let you do that. I will. These have kind of been sitting here for a little bit, so we'll see how they transfer. Just try and get one off. Yeah. These aren't going to be the prettiest loaves when it's all said and done. The machete won't work though. You just rip it with your hands. Alright. We want that to come off. Yeah, right? that's been sit they've been sitting there for about an hour, so they're a little they've gotten a little loose. Let's get a little, um, toss a little semolina. Do you have that? Yeah. Up? So we're actually going to add a little bit of, um, what is it? What is it? This is just cornmeal. Cornmeal. And you can use semolina or cornmeal, but cornmeal's cheaper. So we're going to add that to the floor of the oven just to help the bread have something to kind of slide on as we. Bread is in. Oh. Now, um, I gotta get this. I've got a little uh, thing here that I've made. We would call this in the film business, call that a snoot. Um, but I, I don't want too much smoke on the front of the oven here. So I put this in to push the smoke out while it's heating up. But now I gotta get it off. There's Autumn and Claire. The studio audience here. <laughs> And Teresa, Hello. Clayton's wife. All right, so I got to get this off, and I didn't. And I can do it with this wax paper real fast. And the reason I want to take that off is because I want to put the door in. So the door is actually going to go in the front of the oven here and lock it in place, or lock the heat in. And that's why we take the fire out, because we don't want to have to deal with smoke filling the oven. We just want the ambient heat from the mass of the stove to, or the stove, of the, of the oven to do the baking for us. So. And now we wait. But while we're waiting, I thought we could hear a little bit from Clayton um, about, one, Clayton's a lot taller than me. That's why he's standing downhill, yep. leaning up against the oven. So Clayton, tell me um, when you first started making bread and, um, and then talk about the process a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we um, started baking bread nine or ten years ago there was a recipe that was like all over the internet that was this five minute no need artisan bread um, and and we made that all the time and we would throw it together we put it in the fridge and whenever we wanted bread we'd cut a piece off and throw that in the oven and cook it um, and that was kind of our start and then I read a book um, a few years later called The Bread Baker's Apprentice and um, I realized that the bread we were making was good but we could make really good bread <laughs> yeah and so we started making recipes out of that and I just kind of went through a bunch of the recipes and grew to have favorites and the recipe that I made today is is kind of become my standard recipe um, 
and it is honestly is a variation on that original five minute okay. um, five minute no need recipe because the, that original recipe was you mixed your ingredients up and then you let it rise and then you stuck it in the fridge and this one um, you put the water and the flour and the yeast um, all together in the salt and you knead it and then you stick it in the fridge um, and let it and, you, and putting it in the fridge stops it from rising um, and you put it in overnight or like this one I got up and I made the bread and I put it in the fridge and um, the science of it is that by sticking it in the fridge it stops the yeast from getting too active and the moisture starts to break down the starches into the more simple sugars, which means mm. that there's more for the, the yeast to eat when it's time for them to actually start doing their work, and that creates more flavor. And I, I can say that the Clayton's brought a few, a few loaves over um, once I started building the cob oven. In fact, his kids' feet are in the, the uh, DIY video, which isn't finished yet. That's coming soon. Um, but they help make the cob as well. So it's been kind of a, a neighbor, neighborly effort from the beginning. But I've had some of this bread, and it's, it's amazing. Um, so tell me the name of the book again. It's called The Bread Baker's Apprentice. It's by a guy named... I don't know. I can't remember his name. Well, you got the title of the book, yeah, and actually, if, yeah. you're, if you're interested, I'll put a link to that, um, an Amazon link to that book in the comments below if you're interested in learning how to make bread. I probably need to get it myself. So, um, we've got about 15 minutes here or so before this is going to be done. I see some steam coming out. Maybe that's a little bit of smoke. But would it be okay to open the oven and see sure. what's yeah. going on inside? Yeah. All right, let's see if we have any rising on this. Ooh. Yeah, that's definitely cooking. All right, so the bread is in the oven. We're going to close the door again here just to conserve that heat because we want the mass of heat here in the oven to cook for us. I see Village TV, thanks for that. Well, yes, it definitely looks good. I am. I may need to send my daughter back into the house to get us some butter so we can slice one of these bad boys Daddy. up as soon as it's done and uh, as soon as it's cool enough to eat. Right now? Right now? Butter right now? Butter. Right now? Butter. Now? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Claire's covering her face. <laughs> nice. All right. All right, so actually, let's do this. Uh, um, while the bread is in the oven, if you have any questions, and there's a few of you here still watching the stream, if you have any questions for Clayton um, or me about the... The bread looks good. I see Tim Miller had a comment there. Hello from Ohio. The bread looks good, or the oven, which, which is it? The bread definitely looks good. All right, so we can see your chat. So if you if you want to ask us the bread, oh, the bread, Tim, thanks. Yeah. So what about the oven? Do you think the oven looks good? I spent a lot of time on that oven. Yeah, we um, we watched from our upstairs next door and watched <laughs> them smash all the mud and everything together as they built that thing. And our kids came over and with permission uh, yeah, with joined permission in the fun. And got super muddy. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Thanks for your kudos on the oven. Um, it's definitely been a fun project for me. I've been dreaming about this for a while, and then the the one thing I didn't know was how I was going to do the bread part of it. And um, and then we got new neighbors, and sure sure enough, hello from Germany, guten Abend. Um, and sure enough, we have new neighbors that can make bread. So plus our kids get along and we get along too so it's yeah. it's a it's a win-win situation. One of the things I want to show you while we're waiting here is I've got some cracking that's happening on the stove. 
Um, this, for example, two cracks here. And this is the thinner part of the stove here. I keep calling it a stove, the oven. And um, I'm not as concerned about that. I'm, obviously, I would prefer that it didn't crack, but I'm, I'm okay that it's cracking here. I'll come back in with some slip. I'll make some very liquidy clay, and I'll put it into like a Ziploc bag like you would use like a piping bag for icing, and I'm gonna squirt it into these these big cracks here um, and get those to fill up. One thing that I had to do was I had to cut off some of my door. See how the bread's looking in there? As the oven, you know, when I built the oven, I had this door in place. Um, it was the right size. Sorry about that, I saw a chat that went away. But what happened is as the oven dried, it shrunk. And, and so I had to actually cut the, the bottom off the door about, about a, a quarter inch. And I cut some off the sides too, and I wish I hadn't because now it doesn't fit perfectly. So what I may need to do is come back and build another door that, is, that will actually fit perfectly again. So there's our two loaves of bread. So Clayton, how are we going to know when the bread is finished? So the, the way I usually do it is um, at home, I, I cook it at 500 degrees in the oven. And after about 20 minutes, I check it. And I check the temperature and I've got like my little thermometer here. And I plug it in, and when it gets to 200 or 205 degrees with an internal temperature, then I know that it's ready to be done and we can pull it out. Um, and at 500 degrees, it takes somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes, depending on how large the loaves are. And so if they're baguettes, they cook a lot faster than if they're, um, you know, something Well, like bigger. the size we like the yeah. size we have in there now, which is probably more like a... Like you'd get at Macaroni Grill, yeah. you know, a, yeah. a bigger... Now they yeah. did expand from when yeah, you brought so we, them over. Yeah, they, they grew a lot in the last hour as we kind of, you know, were waiting around and stuff, so... Yeah, we were waiting around because I was finishing the tools. Um, if you're just coming on the stream, I, I wanted to show you the tools we've got for this oven. Um, the first of which is this peel. Um, you see them on Amazon called pizza peels, but this is... Uh, Yes, actually, while, while I see your comment there, Gabe, um, it is big enough for pizza, but I would have to do a more narrow pizza. So it would, the, this peel, which is about eight and a half inches wide, is about the width of the door. If I were making a purely pizza oven, I would probably go with a wider door, like you see on those most, most pizza ovens. But my first purpose for this one was the bread. So I made it more by bread specifications. But, um, so the only thing I would do different if I were cooking pizza is instead of pulling the fire out, I would, leave, I would push the fire with the fire fork to, or the fire hook, to the sides and let that radiant heat stay climbing up the sides of the oven um, during the cooking process. So. If it was up to her, they would all be ready to eat up. Um, yes, would that be my... Explain your question. I'm confused. Yes, but we'll be eating this bread pretty quickly, so if that's what you're getting at, I'm with you on that. Yes, if you were going to do a, a outdoor oven that you would want to use for pizza, um, usually that's going to have a wider door. So if that's going to be... Huh. All right, Tim, I'm with you. All right, so obviously, folks, I'm responding to comments as I see them come in. So if my answers don't make sense, that's why. And if you're watching this later after the live stream, um, you won't be able to see any of those comments. So um, it's not going to make sense at all. So I'll try and restate the question um, when I see it in order to uh, have it make some sort of sense for those of you watching it later. 
The other instrument that I made um, is what we call a fire hook. So it's a piece of flat one and a half inch metal that's an eighth of an inch thick and it kind of is in the shape of a hook. Comes back to a handle um, and read comments loudly. Okay, sorry, yes, um, just using the phone microphone on this. So I'll make sure that they're loud and clear. So this metal is used to reach in, if you're just coming to the live stream, reach in and pull the coals out or push the fire around. Um, and that's why um, we've got metal here with a, um, with a wooden handle on it to act as an insulator. And then, of course, the last item is the mop, which is now filthy from getting the ash out of the oven. We use this to clean it off, add moisture, to the floor of the oven, which is going to help keep the bread from drying out too much as it's baking. So I did a video also about the making of these three tools. The only thing I had to buy for this was the the iron, the, or the steel, the flat iron. So everything else I just found around the house. An old towel, um, some 2 by 4 and a broomstick, and then some shelf wood that I used to, to make the peel. And, and I could say that the mop um, is actually really helpful for, for the bread because um, when I do this at home, I, uh, depending on what kind of oven I have, if I just have a regular oven, I'll put a pan in the oven, a metal pan, in, in the bottom of the oven. And when I put the bread in, I'll pour water into the pan and it'll, it's so hot that it goes to steam immediately. And that's, I don't know why it, this is helpful, but the steam interacts with the outside of the bread um, and helps it become crustier for some reason. And so having the, you know, having the mop, that extra moisture that it adds is, should, you know, be helpful in terms of just getting crusty bread, so. So what, one other thing that um, we didn't do, but you can do, it is, um, is let the oven soak. So after you put the mop in, get that moisture in the oven, you put the door in and then you let it rest for about five or ten minutes just to let the heat kind of even out. You've pulled the fire out and now the heat can kind of even out in the oven. We didn't do that. I don't know that it's going to be detrimental to the bread. But are we, is it about time for us to be able to check it? We can check it, or, sure. Let's take a look. All right, let's... All right, so let's see. Someone's commenting here. It, it creates a crust, crusty bread by sealing the outside. So oh, it, it's go. like braising a steak, I guess, or searing a steak. So there's the, the bread inside. Teresa, you want to come look? It's beautiful, just beautiful. I see some golden brown on the bottom there, on the back one, looks like. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's quite quite done yet. where it's done, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the so outside gonna... will start to brown up. And, All right, so... And who knows how... We don't know how, don't know how hot, hot it is, it is inside, right. so... You can. So one nice thing about an oven like this is, you know, you heat it up, and it probably... need to move from to back. Yeah, the front... Yeah, the front, front one might need, might need Ah, to switch them around. That's bit. a good idea, Tim. Let's do that. Um, so I've got the um, what Tim is suggesting, and I appreciate y'all getting involved in this. We're gonna we're gonna switch the loaves around. I'm gonna pull one out um, and then put the front one in the back. Is that what you're suggesting, Tim? So here's a look so far at that. We got a little browning on the bottom yeah. there. Slide that in the behind it. Here's our other loaf so far. Got some browning on the other, on the bottom there. Coal on there. Since it's out, we might as well just test it. It's cooking on the bottom a lot faster than the top. So. All right, we're doing a ch show show them on the camera there. Yeah, so we got. Of course, it's it's backwards. It's for backwards us. for us. It's straightforward for them. I think. All right, 
So let's, it's, let's it's get it actually back cooking in. pretty quickly. Okay. All right, I'm going to put this back in. Tim, thanks for that suggestion. That the heat probably hadn't evened out so much on the um, on the oven. And I will say this: it, I probably let it cool down too much the fire before we started. So if I had if we put the bread in about 20 minutes ahead of time or ahead of when we did, that probably wouldn't would have been where we have optimal heat. Yeah. Although what you're saying is it's cooking pretty good. The bottom is cooking, uh, yeah, it's cooking pretty quickly. And the bottom, you can tell, the bottom's cooking and is, and is browning up, but the top hasn't browned up. And so, um, you know, so the floor is hotter than the rest of the ambient heat, I okay. guess. Yeah, well, the, um, the inside of the oven is probably about um, 16 to 18 inches tall. So we have that, that igloo of that dome inside the the thickness of the oven is about six inches uh, on the main part of the dome the door here is obviously thinner it's more like four inches that's probably why we're seeing some cracking there all right so tim's saying that sometimes we can put a rack on the the bottom of the oven to get to get that bread off the floor um, in order to get get it closer to the heat coming down from the top and um, that's a good suggestion. Tim, have you done bread before um, in an outdoor oven or you just bake it in your kitchen? Anybody else have experience baking bread? So yes, Tim, in the kitchen or in the outdoor oven? I had two questions there. I hit, I hit you with a two-parter. So what do you think? We got another... Uh, at this rate, I'm thinking, you know, Five to ten more minutes. Five maybe. to ten more minutes. All right. So, all right. So, you know any songs that we could sing, or um, you don't want me to sing? Okay, no singing. All right. So, Tim actually has a large oven outside. Excellent. Brush the tops with butter. Bef it would brown. Okay, that that's a good suggestion too. All right. So, Village TV is coming out of Pakistan. That's cool. And so you do non. Um, yeah, which is flatbread. I love naan. I think that's something we have to try. So we're going to do more live streams like this. And we will take suggestions in the comments. Um, great, Tim. Yeah, send me a picture. If you send an email to tom at greenshorts.com, um, that's shorts with a Z, one, one word. Um, in fact, if you go in the YouTube channel, um, uh, info section you can find that email address I'd love to see a picture of your stove in fact I'll even feature it in an upcoming video so if, my understanding of non too is that you traditional is it usually cooked in a tandoori where like you put it on the walls and cook it directly on the on the walls of the of the oven or so village um, TV um, love to hear about why that. don't you answer that question um, He's asking about the, the traditional method for cooking tandoori, or for naan, using a tandoori oven. Or is it a stove? It's an oven. So yes, he's saying yes, you're right, we stick it to the wall, so okay. Yeah, so in this case, the, just the floor would work fine, because it's, you know, I'm not, you're not gonna stick it on the ceiling. <laughs> you know, because a tandoori, I think, is, is, tends to be more upright. And you okay. open it from the top. And ah, I see, I see. So. Yeah, so I would, so maybe we need, a, do we need a different oven to make ten, uh, to make? No, I think we could do it in here. You just put it on the, on the bottom. On the floor. It on the okay. floor and um, because be delicious. Because here in the, um, Village TV, you'll, you'll think this is funny, but here in the States, one of the few places we can get naan is at Trader Joe's, um, but it's frozen which kind of defeats the purpose. So the floor will work good if clean enough. Okay, thanks for that. So we will um, do some research and maybe make some naan. Yeah. Try to try that. Yeah, and I've got Pakistani friends and maybe they could help us. Oh, that'd be great. Figure out uh, the best way for us to do it. So it's so one of the, the, one of the, let's see, Tim is saying, I use my oven all summer long and sometime in the winter. So Tim, where do you live that that climate works for you? Actually, I think you said Ohio, didn't you? We're just standing here, waiting for 
So one of the amazing things about our city, we're, we're here in, in a Kettering, Ohio. Well, is that near, is that north, central, or my dad's actually from Middletown, Ohio. So I have some roots there. Was a Reds fan growing up. Cincinnati Reds is a baseball team for those of you around the world where cricket, so Dayton, okay. Dayton is, yeah, right there in the middle. So halfway, so Middletown is halfway between Cincinnati and Dayton. That's why it's called Middletown. One of the amazing things about our city here in Atlanta is there are, it's a very international city. Um, many um, refugees that come to the U.S. actually are settled here. Um, and uh, so we've got amazing food from many different nations, even just right around the corner. We've got a place up here, a Peruvian chicken place. Mm -hmm. What else? There's a v I know there's mm -hmm. a pho place, yeah, a Vietnamese place. We've got the, place. the Afghan kebab place right around the corner and all kinds of stuff up and down the main highway here. So, so I see that Tim works in Middletown, where my, dad, there, my, my dad's from. Cool. That's, cool. That's one of the nice things about YouTube here is that we have a very international community as well. So now Village TV is watching um, from uh, Pakistan, too. So we're all, all over the world. And then we got someone watching in Germany as well. And all right, so we got see some nice steam coming out of the oven here. What do Germans do for bread? Sarah, um, is our German friend still on the live stream here? And if so, do you have any special bread Pretzels. that you make uh, in Germany? Beer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Beer bread. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one, Tim. That's German Ama for... Amazingly, beer and bread are, are very similar in terms of the process of making them. You know, they're both grain with yeast and water. And, um, you know, you just get slightly different products out of them. So if you so. haven't, um, yeah, it's amazing. You know, there, um, if you haven't seen, if you have Netflix, and I know it's, um, uh, it, it's not available everywhere in the world, but Netflix has a, a series they did based on a book called um, Cooked by um, Michael, oh, what's his last name? I can't think of it right now. Pullen. Huh? Pollen, yeah, Pollen, Pollen. Um, all right, got Northern California in here as well. Hope you're doing okay with the fires out there. It's, um, we hope that y'all get some remedy from that soon. It's pretty, pretty devastating. But, um, sorry for that sidebar there. Good, you're doing well, thank you. Glad, glad you're doing well. Um, what was I talking about, though? Man, I squirreled on that. I My train of thought went... I was talking about Michael Pollan. So the, there's a, an amazing... Um, ah, okay, so in Pakistan, they have to make their own alcohol at home. Excellent. And I see LOLZ. I imagine so a lot of places moon, in Pakistan it's moonshine. illegal. Ah, that's, oh, that's right. You know, that's right. Alcohol. That's right. I forgot um, about that. And if that. not illegal... Um, Frowned upon. A lot of, a lot, most of the people around you wouldn't be drinking, so. Um, Good point. Yeah. Um, so back to this, this Netflix series called Cooked. It's a four-part series, and the book is, um, let's see, bread recipes available online. Actually, yeah, if you'd like, we'll post the recipe um, to this, one on there, this yeah. bread um, in the comments or in the, in the description below after the live stream's over. We got to kind of go publish it and then um, then we can do that so um, but so this Michael I'm, I'm answering all these comments as I'm trying to get through this sentence which is tricky uh, so this series is based on the four elements fire water earth and air it's a fascinating series um, about food and how those four elements go into um, the making of food and how it integrates with with culture um, and family and community. It's just, it, and not only that, it's, it's, it's amazingly beautifully shot. It's from a filmmaker's perspective. It's just elegant. Um, so it, it covers things from aboriginal cooking where they burn the land and then find animals that, that have hidden. And um, it, it just, it's just amazing. But it gets into um, a, a significant part about, about bread. Um, and talks about how, you know, if you just tried to subsist on flour, um, you couldn't do it. it. It isn't 
but by making it into bread, it now becomes something that you can live off. Uh, where, whereas before that, so somehow the process of um, of the air being, you know, the yeast and the and and then the this the elements of air uh, become it becomes a sustainable food, which was just fascinating to me. Yeah, well, and it that, may, that makes sense because you have a just a starch basically, and when you add water and mix it, it creates a protein, which is gluten, mm. and um, and so like it changes. It changes the nature of it when you add water and heat to it. Yeah, it's, it's chemistry. Yeah. So I highly recommend that series um, if if you have Netflix, or it, or the book Cooked by Michael Pollan. Um, and I'll actually put a link to um, the book on Amazon in uh, the comments or the description below if you're interested. Um, should we check our bread? Yeah, let's check it. All right, let's open the oven up again here and get you in closer. We lost some of your oven. Uh oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll need to do some patchwork here on the front. Let's just knock that down. Ooh. Alright, I guess I gotta get it out. <laughs> Can't just stand here. I'm gonna throw the thermometer on that. Yeah, let's see, we'll go in the same spot. So I don't know if it's backwards for y'all. It's 180 degrees, 190, 92. So is it going up? 96, 99, 199, yeah, 200, 200. So we're done. Okay. All right. So, um, and that's Fahrenheit. So I'm not sure what that would be in Celsius. I can tell you. Ah. Let's throw it in. That's, so we have to we have a watching. Celsius we have, setting. Here we go. So 80. 80 degrees, so 86 degrees Celsius yeah. would be um, when that bread is finished. Is that right? Are we? No, let's get it. Let's see. How it, it's probably even more closer to 100, 100 stopping degrees. it right around 96, 97. So right around there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Why don't you flip the tray over? Actually, we got it. We got some butter over here too. Should we get the other one out too? Sure, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna get in the fire. You wanna check temp on this or? No, if we'll just... one's done, the other one's close enough. Okay. We're not needing to be too exact. So. Alright, what do you think? Actually, we couldn't see any of your comments there while while we were getting it out. So if you have any, that looks amazing. Should we break one open, or is it too hot still? It's probably too hot still. I usually let it. Honestly, I let it cool usually for about an hour or so before I open it up. Teresa, my wife, loves to just open it up. It's when it's still hot. It's um, it hasn't fully set yet, even ah, though it's done. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's kind of it can be kind of doughy still, even though it's fully cooked. Um, Teresa does not mind that, but I prefer personally to let it it's become probably fully too bread. Hot for us to open it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, it would really be unfair of us to eat this bread in front of you. Um, that would just be wrong. But uh, it smells amazing, and so I just wanted to uh, thank you to those of you who stuck around. Um, There's six of you still watching. So we see five thumbs up. That's great. So um, it, but actually, before we go, do you have any more um, questions for, for me or for Clayton? Wait just a second to see if the comments pop up. Just a tip. Give us a tip. What do you got? <coughs> Village T coming in. Village TV coming in from Pakistan. 
It's going to give us a tip. It's going to be a big tip. It's going to be a long tip because he's still typing. Uh, actually, Red Elk, we will put the recipe to this particular bread in the... Um, to stop your oven from breaking, use long hay. Mix it in the mud. I did actually put some some stems of grass in this. Um, maybe not long enough. It may have been not not the most durable hay. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm actually going to make a a Cobb um, rocket stove. I did one um, in a video that you can see on my channel. Um, but I I did some things well wrong. <laughs> based on a lot of the comments I got, I'm actually gonna rebuild that stove. So when I do that, um, I will use the hay like you're talking about. Uh, that was one of the things I did differently. I didn't use a binder. I used an armature inside the mud, but uh, that didn't, um, it made it a lot more difficult. Yeah, Tim asked if I slow heated the stove, um, uh, the oven. Um, I, I did. And I and I didn't. Um, I I probably could have heated it a little more slowly. It it definitely um, it was hard to heat it slowly. I did a smaller you know I did smaller fires to start, but it was just so much fun to get it started that I may have gone too hot um, with that initial the initial couple fires there. So that could have contributed to the stove cracking. Is that what you're saying? Heat it up too fast, dry it out too fast then it will crack. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Tim, if I did that, if I did this again, then um, um, I will uh, probably heat it more slowly. Anyway, so thank you all for watching. And what I normally do here on Green Shorts is uh, DIY videos that... Um, focus on making our lives more sustainable. So green shorts DIY and the idea being stuff we can use, uh, materials we can find, um, you know, low cost solutions um, and things that, that help us um, do things more efficiently and with a more sustainable view on living here on earth together. So um, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And, and there, you can save green um, by doing it yourself. So I usually try and post a video every Friday that doesn't always happen. I have been doing a, a more live streams lately just um, around some of the projects I'm working on, little snippets of that. So you can, um, if you subscribe and click on the bell, um, then you'll be notified when I'm doing a live stream or when I post a new video. So thanks you all for watching. Uh, thank you to Village TV um, and Tim Miller for your great questions and comments and the others of you who commented as well. Thank you so much. And um, so we'll see you here next time. I'm just going to go eat this bread. Thanks. Right now, I'm going to eat this bread. I'm going to end this video and then the bread is mine.